My name is Larissa, and I'd like to welcome you to the 92nd Street Y. How's everybody? Good. I'm delighted that you're all here. I'm delighted that you can join us for this very special concert. We're going to tell you a story today with music and dancing and some beautiful pictures that children drew about four unbelievable boys. And one of the people that I'd like you to meet right away, her name is Olga, and she comes from the United Nations. And they have made a very special surprise that they want to share with you today. So can you help me welcome Miss Olga from the United Nations? Hello, everybody. How are you doing today? <laughs> My name is Olga, and I'm here from the United Nations. Do you know about the United Nations? So the United Nations headquarters is located on First Avenue by the East River. Have you been there? Yeah. United Nations is an international organization and it's over 67 years old. Every, every country in the world is a member of the United Nations, including your country, the United States. The United Nations work really hard to make sure that all countries are friendly to each other, to make sure that there is peace in the world and no war. United Nations make sure that all kids in the world have food, safe place to go home, and go to school. United Nations also provides space for countries to talk to each other. I also know that recently you have learned about a young Jewish boy, Peter Gins. Peter Gins was truly t talented, and he created a lot of beautiful drawings and had an incredible imagination. He liked to learn and to dream, and he was incredibly curious, like all of you. And next Wednesday at the United Nations, we're gonna show a new animated documentary about life and artwork of Peter Gins. And I invite all of you to come next Wednesday to the United Nations with your families to watch this documentary. And I have a surprise for you. Right now we're gonna watch a, shor a short trailer about this documentary. Thank you. Roosevelt, for example, wrote a novel in 80 days around the world. Better wrote a novel in one second around the world. Friday, September 19, 1941. The weather is foggy. Jews were told to wear a badge, which looks approximately like this. When I went to school, I counted 69 sheriffs. I never saw anything he wrote that he is frightened or worried or because everything uh, in his diary he wrote is was just recording facts, not feelings. He didn't feel a, a need to record his feelings because his feelings he remembered and the facts he was afraid to forget.
I think the world has lost a lot of talent because I know that Peter would have been someone written up in the annals of humanity. My name is Peter Gins. I love to write stories, draw, and dream of places far, far away. I am from the majestic city of Prague, but I live in Terezin now, in house L417 in room one, with 40 other boys who are my age and who I didn't know before I arrived here, but are now my friends. We did not choose to live here, but had no choice. We have a teacher, Walter Eisinger, living with us, and his teaching inspired us to create a secret magazine called Vedum, which means in the lead. Creating this magazine helped us when we felt homesick for our families and friends. It may seem incredible, but the magazine was all our own idea. We write everything ourselves. I am the editor-in-chief, and I encourage all the boys to write something new each week for our magazine. I usually sit cross-legged on my lower bunk, like this, surrounded by pens, pencils, engravers, brushes, pieces of paper of all sizes, and what is left of parcels from my parents. I write and draw quickly, knowing that there is a deadline to meet each Friday. Then I go round and round, collecting stories, poems, and drawings from all the other boys in my room. I carefully correct every spelling and grammar mistake they make. I can sometimes be quite malicious, and I like to poke fun at my friends. Some days, I am inspired to draw what I see around me. For instance, here's a drawing I made of House L417. Other days, I dream of going to space and walking on the moon. Do you want to travel to the moon with me? <laughs> Other days, I express my feelings in words. I love writing poems because I feel I express myself most easily through writing. Well, here's a poem I wrote just last week. I remember, long, long ago, a madman wished to change the world, turn it upside down and inside out, fill people and youth with one ideal, take nothing on trust, let nothing stand, fight for every inch of land. If something is down, then lift it up. If others stay silent, then you must speak up. And so this madman, Years ago, tried turning the world upside down and walked his cat instead of his dog. My friends in Terezin love art, poetry, and music. One of our favorite composers is Leos Janacek, and he wrote a piece called Mladi, which means youth. There are six musicians needed to play Mladi. I would like you to meet them. First, let's meet Keith. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, nice of you all to be here. Uh, first of all, do we have any flute players in the audience today? Yes, so <laughs> I'm also a flutist. And the flute, I don't know if you knew this, is the oldest instrument of the six woodwind instruments and one brass um, that you're going to hear today. It was actually the first flutes were found in um, China they, they found them about five or six years ago, and they were over 7,000 years old. And those flutes were made of, of bones. Um, eventually, the flute started to be made out of, out of wood, which is why it's considered a woodwind. And then they started developing 
this key system, which is a very, a very elaborate way of the keys to work, so you can play all the notes in the chromatic scale. In fact, the clarinet and the oboe were influenced by this key system, and the way their keys work is um, based on this. So I'm going to play a, a melody for you from a piece by uh, the composer Debussy, and it's called Syrinx. And I have a little family member of the flute player over here called the piccolo. So I'll play a little bit of that same um, melody on this instrument, and you can hear the difference. It might bring out a different character in the music or a different feeling. Let's hear it for Keith. Next, let's meet Catherine. Hello, everybody. Does anyone know what instrument this is? Can you just call it out? No, it's not the clarinet. Yes, it's the oboe. Oh, I'm so glad you got it. So the, re the way you can always tell the oboe from the clarinet is up here at the top. So up here I have my double reed. It's not the most attractive noise ever. Um, anyway, I make these reeds out of something related to bamboo, and I have all kinds of machines in my house, and I scrape them into these tiny, tiny little reeds that are about one-tenth the thickness of a piece of paper at the top. It takes a long time. Um, anyway, I stick the reed into the oboe. The oboe is made out of wood, like a lot of instruments up here. This is a wood called grenadilla. It comes from South America. Oh, sorry. Um, and uh, the oboe, m one of the best things for me about the oboe is that we get to play a lot of great melodies, especially in orchestral music. Um, and a lot of the melodies evoke strange, wonderful places that are very far away. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Next, let's meet Igor. Oh, good afternoon, everybody. And now, what instrument is this? That is clarinet. Very common um, misconception by looking at the two instruments. They do look very similar, clarinet and the oboe. And as Catherine explained to you, the difference is in the way the sound is produced. Um, and it's actually quite a significant difference. Uh, Catherine uh, told you about her double reed. Clarinet, on the other hand, has a single reed. Um, it's also made from a similar bamboo-related material, except it's only one piece um, of that material that uh, is very thin at the tip. And in order for this piece to vibrate, it, is ge it gets placed against the top part of the clarinet, which is called a mouthpiece. What also makes it very interesting, um, Keith and I sit on the opposite sides of this group, and Keith mentioned that his instrument is uh, perhaps one of the oldest, if not the oldest, woodwind instrument. Well, clarinet happens to be 
the youngest woodwind instrument. It, the instrument itself, as we know, it has only been around for maybe a couple of hundred years or so, which seems like a lot of time, but it's not very long if you think of 7,000 years in history of flute. Uh, clarinet is made out of grenadilla wood, and um, uh, the quality of the wood is that it's very, very hard, and the, when the piece gets taken from the wood, they still, uh, the, the makers of the instruments, they still don't make the instrument right away. They actually have to age it to make it even harder. And what makes clarinet uh, very special, it's a very versatile instrument uh, that it could be a member of many different kinds of musical groups, uh, and that includes band, um, or jazz, or some kind of jazz ensemble, uh, klezmer, or any kind of folk group, and of course, naturally, classical music, be it chamber music or an orchestra. Uh, what makes clarinet uh, also very special is its sound, which is very sweet and uh, very sensitive. And uh, I'll play a little short excerpt uh, that demonstrates that. Also, just like in case with uh, Keith, I have um, a little brother or sister of clarinet, a little clarinet, which is called a piccolo clarinet. Now, what makes this instrument special, even though it's a member of a, f of a family of instruments that are supposed to produce very sweet and uh, um, very um, soft sounds, this instrument is actually used for very funny music, and a lot of times, it is used just like somebody who is going like this and kind of trying to make fun of uh, other instruments. So there is a piece of music um, that has a very lovely, uh, sweet theme in it. And at the end of that piece, a composer uses this instrument to sort of make fun of that theme. Thank you, Igor. Next, we're going to hear from Christopher. Hi, everybody. Who can tell me what this is? Nope. Nope. Oh, I heard a correct answer from the little girl in the second row. This is a bass clarinet. It's just like Igor's clarinets, but bigger and deeper. I can play pretty high. But nobody really wants to hear that. So in the orchestra, I play the grandfather, just like a, another low instrument you'll hear later. And very often, I'll play a very serious or even a sad melody like this one from Mahler's First Symphony. Thank you, Christopher. Now, let's meet Michael. 
Hey, everybody. Want to tell me what this is? Very good. I'm so glad that I did not hear all of you say the tuba. That's really insulting, actually. Um, so you may be wondering why a brass instrument is up here with a bunch of beautiful woodwind instruments. Um, the answer is that the French horn is very special in that its character of sound is mellow enough that it can blend very easily with string instruments. The French horn was born as a signaling instrument and was meant to be played outdoors and start off playing very simple things like this. <laughs> So pretty simple, right? But as time went on, composers started to find other ways to take advantage of the mellow sound characteristics of the horn and began to write very pretty solos, very much like the oboe. And they tend to sound like this. And you'll hear a lot of writing like this when we start to play the music later. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. And finally, let's meet Larissa. Hi, everybody. What's this? A bassoon, that's right. And it has the word bass in its name because it plays down low. And s most of the time, the bassoon is known as the clown of the orchestra. But sometimes composers write us a kind of a low, soulful part. So listen to this. Thank you, Larissa. Now, let's listen to Janacek's Mladi. As you do, remember me, Peter Ginz.
My name is Hanu Speck, and I lived in room one with Peter. I am an actor and a comedian, and people think of me as a star here in Tarazine. I can stand alone on stage for 10 minutes and entertain and amuse the audience. Hey, why couldn't the pony sing? Because he was a little horse. <laughs> Get it? My friends from room one come to see me and other performers after dinner in cabarets, plays, recitals, and concerts. Here is another performance they saw, another piece by Janacek called March of the Blue Boys. The other actors and I rehearse in the freezing temperatures in the attic where the wind whistles and howls. When our shows are ready for performance, we give out tickets. At our last performance, 300 tickets were given out, but 900 people showed up. We gave our best performance ever, and the audience gave us a grateful applause. Many musicians live here in Tarazine, including another composer, Pavel Haas. Listen to this playful, colorful piece by Pavel Haas for Woodwind Quintet. Keep your ears open for playful sounds, and as you do, remember me, Hanush Beck.
My name is Hanush Hockenberg, and I am a poet. I write poems because I feel I express myself most easily through writing. For me, poems are what friends are to other people. So I tell all my feelings to the paper in front of me. Paper is silent. It can take anything. I can pour out my anger. I can cry. I can laugh. The poems I write are confusing sometimes. They are hard to understand. I write them in a way that the special people that do understand can be my friends. This is a poem I wrote for all people, young and old in the world. We are children, little ones, playing with a colored ball. We cry easily with ruddy cheeks. Then, with glowing faces, we look out at a silvery world, at green hillsides, at life. We look ahead. <laughs> My friends in room one think I'm a little odd sometimes. My head in the clouds. I'm not the biggest, fastest, or strongest boy in room one, but I am a dreamer. I dream of a better world. Remember me, Hanush Hockenberg. <laughs> Thank you. 
My name is Leo Lowy, and I lived in room one with Peter, Hanush, and Hanush. I was the only one of the four boys to make it to America. I came to New York City in 1946 and lived here at the 92nd Street Y for three years. Peter received lots of packages from his parents. We became friends when he shared his salami and marmalade with me. Peter and I were both very lucky to have Walter Isinger, an extraordinary teacher, living with us. He was a marvelous and unbelievable person. When Walter got married, all of the boys saved pieces of butter, sugar, and flour to make him a special wedding cake. It was his courage that inspired us to write, draw, paint, and sing. He believed in us and believed that a better world was possible. He didn't, however, tell us what to believe in. He insisted that we, form an, that we learn a lot before we form an opinion about anything. He had a special inner strength that he brought out in all of us. Our teachers guide us through things we don't know or understand. It is with their help that we can become the best that we can be. Teachers are our greatest friends. They are generous with their hearts and minds, and we thank them for everything they do. We would like to take this moment to acknowledge all of our teachers, especially the ones in the audience. Would all of the teachers stand up? Would all the teachers stand up so we can applaud for them, please? And I'm very pleased to say that we are honored to have a really special guest with us. Leo Lowy, who lived with Peter, Hanush, and Hanush, and survived the Holocaust, is sitting right there. Would you please stand up so we can acknowledge you? When we write, draw, sing together, our spirit is strong. It can overcome anything. My friend Karina is going to teach us a song so that as we sing together, we can remember the way Peter, Hanush, Hanush, and Leo together transform their lives in Terezin into art that we remember today. Let's welcome Karina. And because we're going to sing it together, let's make sure that the person that is sitting beside you, by your side, is ready to sing. Go with a high five. And let's do it. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. So 
are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. We are not alone. Someday. Oh, deep in my heart, I do believe. I want to hear you singing. We shall overcome someday. There you are. We're all together. So. Oh.